Welcome to the micro training video on navigating SAS VIA. Within this training, we will discuss the different SAS VIA applications that are available to the user. Mainly, we will discuss the SAS Studio application and the Explorer bar that is available to view and access the organization's workbenches. We will talk about the different file system operations that are available for those workbenches and how you can use the SAS Studio user interface to import data into your workbench. Finally, we will touch on the libraries bar as well as the ability that SAS Studio gives the user to clone a GitHub repository for committing changes to production programs and pushing them back to the master branch. We are now within the SAS VIA environment. Um, as you'll see in the upper left hand corner, there is a button that you can push to show the list of the available applications that SAS VIA has to offer. The first one to discuss is the managed data application. This is specific to the cloud analytics services also known as CAS, that SAS VIA has to offer. The user can utilize this application and its user interface to manually load data into in-memory tables within either a temporarily assigned CAS lib that will last only for that spe specific session or within an organization's designated global CAS lib. The other application that is available specific to the CAS engine is the Explore and Visualize application. This allows the user to utilize a user interface that allows to build dashboards and dynamic reports that sit on top of those in-memory tables that are stored within a designated global cast lib for an organization. The main application that we'll be discussing in this video is the Develop SAS code, which is the SAS Studio environment. As you can see, the layout and the functionality of the SAS Studio is very similar to that of the SAS Enterprise Guide application. Uh, the user has the ability to set different options and preferences for their uh, environment to work in. On the left-hand side, you'll see there are the different bars that are available. Uh, the first one to discuss is the Explorer bar. On this bar, uh, you can find under the workspace files and workbench folder all of the available organizational dedicated uh, SAS workbenches. Each of these workbenches are Amazon Web Services S3 buckets that are mounted to the SAS servers. Each organization is set up with their own S3 bucket that has different permissions assigned based on the groups that are available and assigned to each user profile. For instance, if I wanted to access a specific bucket, I would have to have my user profile be assigned to that group that is given permissions to read or write or execute within that particular S3 workbench. Using one that I do have access to, Within the folder structure, you can see there is the ability to save SAS programs, as well as log files, list files, and other types of text delimited or Excel files. The different file system operations that the user interface has to offer are the ability to create a new folder structure within your existing folder structure, and these can be subfolders and based on whatever hierarchy that is needed. Another option that is available is the ability to copy uh, and or move folders and files within a workbench that your user group has access to, uh, to copy this file into the test folder that I just created. It's just a simple right click and going down into the available location that was just created. And it copies that file over and underneath 
the folder. There also is the ability to import external data with using the SAS Studio user interface. This gives you the ability either to right click and upload files or within the explorer bar with the up arrow is an upload files button. From there, you have the ability to upload any external data that's saved on your local PC or perhaps to a network that you are connected to. Uh, again, these can be Excel files, zip files, or any sort of text delimited file that allows for you to store within your X3 workbench. Um, there are previously saved programs in this location and to establish a SAS library connection, it's as easy as simply right clicking on the folder in your S3 workbench that you want and inserting it as the path. And I will go ahead and demonstrate how to import the Excel file that I just imported into my S3 workbench as a SAS data set that is now going to be permanently stored in the same location. As you can see here, with a right click and refresh of the folder, I now have a member states.sas7bdat SAS data sets that's permanently saved on our S3 bucket. It also gives you the ability to see the libraries bar where I can go to see the output library that I just created, as well as take a look at that member state SAS data set and the different fields that are available within it. Uh, the ability to implicitly connect to a Hive table does allow for the ability to search within the libraries to see what type of Hive tables and columns are available in a particular schema. These will be touched based on a future microtraining video based on using the available auto exec macros that are widely available within the system. However, running this real quickly allows us to see the EQRS library that was created and the different hive tables that are available within that schema, as well as the different fields and columns that are available within a particular hive table. Finally, there is the, this bar called Git Repositories that allows a user to clone previously created GitHub repositories and be able to make changes to production code as well as stage those changes and commit them and push them back to the master. And with that, I'd like to thank you for viewing this micro training video. For additional resources, you can visit the CCSQ Data and Analytics Confluence page, where there are lots of good training and user guides that describe best practices and additional navigation around SAS via. You can also visit the SAS support online, where they provide lots of good inf inf and informative documentation and resources.